I'm Sophia Malone, and you're watching Herstory. Today, I'm going to be Amelia Earhart. Time to fly! Amelia was born on July 24, 1897, in Ashton, Kansas. When Amelia was seven, she went to the World Fair with her family in St. Louis, Missouri. While there, Amelia and her younger sister, Muriel, were like, That's so cool! and became inspired to build their own roller coaster. When they got home, they built one with wooden tracks and a buggy. Amelia was brave and went first, and even though she crashed, she loved the excitement and said, I feel like I'm flying through the air. As a teenager, Amelia's parents got divorced and her family split up. Amelia moved to Chicago with her mom and sister. At 19, she attended Algon School in Pennsylvania, where she was later elected the vice president of her class. During Christmas of 1917, Amelia went to visit her sister in Toronto, Canada. World War I had started and Amelia saw many soldiers who were wounded in the war. While in Toronto, Amelia decided, I'm not going back to school, and instead decided, I'm going to stay in Canada and train to become a nurse and work at the hospital. You know what? Amelia did so much stuff that we talked about every single thing she did. We'd be here all day. So if it's all right by you, I'm going to speed this up a little. So, Amelia became a nurse in Toronto and worked there until World War I was over. She came back to America and enrolled in Columbia University, New York City. She went to an air show with her dad in 1920, and three days later she took her first plane ride. She signed up for flying lessons with some lady named Netta and eventually bought her own plane, which was named Canary. It was yellow. She became an official pilot in 1921 and started lessons with her new teacher named Monty Montijo. She sold the Canary for a yellow convertible. This guy named Charles Lindbergh made news by becoming the first pilot to fly across the Atlantic Ocean. This other guy, George Putnam, wanted a woman to do it too, and luckily, he found Amelia. Even though she was only a passenger, it was a great experience. It took them 20 hours and 40 minutes. When she got back to the United States, she was famous. She made money by giving speeches and interviews. She became an editor for Cosmopolitan magazine, bought another plane, and became the first president of a group called the Women's Air Derby. She helped start an airline called New York, Philadelphia, and Washington Airway all while setting flying records of her own. She eventually married her manager, George Putnam. Phew! That was a lot of cool stuff. Now, let's get to the really cool parts. Amelia and George decided that Amelia would try to fly across the Atlantic on her own. She took off on May 20th, 1932, the fifth anniversary of Lindenburg flight. It was a tough flight because she had to fly through lots of ice and her instruments didn't work, but she made it. Amelia even got a medal from President Hoover on January 11th, 1935. Amelia set another record. She became the first person to fly alone over the Pacific Ocean from Honolulu, Hawaii to California. It was then that she planned her flight around the world a 29,000 mile trip. She would need a special plane called the Electra, extra fuel, and two navigators. The first part of the trip was a success, but then the plane got badly damaged taking off from Honolulu. It took almost two months to fix. One of her navigators quit, and the flight path had to be reversed due to weather. It didn't look good, but on May 21st, Amelia and her navigator, Fred Noonan took off again with the world watching them. They flew over 40 hours and 4,000 miles the first week. Within three weeks, Amelia had flown over 20,000 miles. On July 2nd, Amelia took off from New Guinea with only 7,000 miles left to go. They were searching for a tiny island called Howland Island where they were go to land and get more fuel. But Amelia was having trouble finding the island. They were communicating with the Coast Guard, but they eventually lost contact. A rescue mission started right away. 4,000 men on 10 ships and 65 airplanes set out to find Amelia and Fred. 
but they never did. The disappearance remains a mystery to this day. This is Amelia coming in. Amelia, Mayday! 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 We may never know what happened to Amelia Earhart, but what we do know is that she was one of the best and bravest pilots in history. And the rest, you ask? The rest? That's her story. Thanks for flying with us. Whee!